Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful, blessed day today to always be in the presence of the Lord right now. Another day just to give him some thanks right now. Another day just to give him some praise right now. Another day just to give him the glory right now. Another day just to magnify and shout out his holy name right now. Another day to put your faith and your trust in his hope in his hand right now. Another day to exalt his holy name right now. Another day say, God, you are king of kings. You are Lord of lords. Another day say, Jesus, no matter what, I am picking on my cross and I am following you. Another day Father God to say no matter what that come before me God I still got my faith with you I'm still trusting you I'm still going to thank you I'm still going to praise you I'm still going to glorify I'm still going to dance upon your holy name because I know that you got my back and I know that you'll never leave me I know that you'll never forsake me I know that you'll never disappoint me I know that you'll never let me down so at the end of the day I'm here today to give Jesus some thanks in the house of the Lord right now I'm here to give him some praise and I'm here Glory, hallelujah, to give him all the glory because he is still on the throne and he is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus because our God is good. Our God is awesome. Our God is amazing. Our God is faithful. Our God is grateful. Our God is love. Our God is kind. Our God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. He never changed his mind. He never flipped the strip on us. It is us who flipped the strip on him. It is us who changed change our mind on him. He keep it real. He keep it 100 every single day. So that's why I love my God. That's why I praise my God. That's why I glorify my God. That's why I magnify him. That's why I trust him over every anything. Despite what my pain is looking like. Despite what my suffering is looking like. Despite what my struggle is looking like. Despite how dark it is in my life. I know my God keep it real. He keep it real. That's why I praise is so important my brothers and my sisters. And when you praise him like you pra praise him that let me know that is Jesus that is living inside of you. Because only a spirit like that can only praise our Heavenly Father God that we have. I say only a spirit like that can open up their mouth and thank and praise Him no matter what the situation is. No matter how difficult it is, it is the living spirit that's living through that brother. It is the living spirit that is living in that sister. That's why we praise Him the way we do. That's why we glorify him. Everybody don't have the living spirit. They might have a spirit, but they don't have the living spirit. Come on, somebody ain't telling me now. I'm talking about some people right now today that have the living spirit of Christ that is living inside of their heart right now, that is living inside of their body. I'm talking about the living spirit that is roaring right now like a lion right now. How many of you right now today have the living spirit? That is flowing through you right now. That's flowing through your veins. That is flowing through your blood right now. And if you have the living spirit of God right now, open up your mouth and give him a shout out of praise. Open up your mouth and give him a shout out of glory. Open your mouth and say, Jesus, I love you. And I'm too legit to quit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, I come before you humbly in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for this beautiful day. I thank you for this opportunity, God. I thank you, Father God, that you allow myself, my brothers, my sisters, to come together to fellowship in your house, to magnify your name in your house, to glorify your name in your house, and also to exalt your name in your house. Father God, your house is a house of prayer and praise. And God, that's what we are doing right now. We are praying in your house and we praise in your house. We have been worshiping your house. We are seeking you in your house. We are putting our faith and our trust and our hope in your house. Father God, your word tells us in the book of Matthew, verse 18 and 19, with two or more gathered in your name, hallelujah, that you are in the midst of things. So, Father God, we know that you're in the midst of our homes right now. We know that you're in the midst of our television sets right now. We know that you're in the midst of our laptops, our desktop, our iPad, or whatever gadget that we have, or whatever gadget that we're using, God. We know. Hallelujah. I said we know that you're in the midst of it. We know that you're moving. We know that you work things out. We know it's already done. We know it's already complete. We know that you finished, God. And Father God, you're a man who should not lie. You're a man who never changes his mind. Father God, we take no credit, God. That's about to go down in your house right now. Because all the praise and the credit goes belong to you. 
Father God, thank you for allowing me to be the overseer of your flock right now. I thank you for this word that we about to receive. I thank you for this anointing message that we about to take home with us today. Father God, we came in for a reason today. We came in for a purpose. And God, we ain't leaving your house, God. I said, God, we ain't leaving your house until we leave here full and satisfied. Father God, we want more of you and less of us. Father God, we buy every enemy attack right now today that's on earth right now as well as it is in heaven. We buy them. We crush every last one of the enemies attack. It is canceled by the fire and terminated by the fire of Jesus Christ right now today. Father God, allow your spirit to move through this place right now. Allow your love to touch your children right now, Father God. You lift us up right now today, God. You know every last one our needs. You know every last one our concerns. And God, we cast all our problems. We cast all our anxieties. We cast all our troubles on your silver planet today because your word tells us in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 that nobody cares for us more than you, Jesus. So Father God, we here it is right now. We're giving it to you because, Father God, it's too much for us, God. We try to take it on by ourselves, God, but it was weighing us down, God. It was beating us up, God. It was taking us down under. But, God, we're giving it to you right now today. Father God, let's let your love just move and just penetrate through us right now today. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move through us right now. Holy Spirit, touch my brothers right now. Holy Spirit, touch my sisters right now. Holy Spirit, open my brother's eyes. Holy Spirit, open my sister's eyes. Holy Spirit, open my brother's ears. Holy Spirit, open my sister's ears. Let us see what we need to see from you, Holy Spirit. Let us hear what we need to hear from you, Holy Spirit. We give you the thanks right now. We give you the praise in your holy, precious, mighty name. Let the church come together and say, Amen and Amen. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And he is so worthy. He is so worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. And I'm here today on behalf of myself and all my brothers and sisters around the world, around the universe, around the globe. I'm here today to repent of our sins because we fell short of God's grace today. Yes, we made some mistakes today. Yes, we dropped the ball today. We're not perfect at all. Father God, we try God, but God, we made a mistake. So, God, we're here today to confess our sins, to let you know what we did. Even though you already know what we did before we even did it, God. But, God, but I know somebody right now today is ready to call you call you right now. I know somebody right now today trying to beat down the heaven doors and try to tell you what your son's done today, what your daughter's done. You already say, I already know what they're done because they're already about to confess right now. So, Heavenly Father, God, coming for you humbly right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Please forgive me, my brothers and sisters, for every anything God we done wrong inside of your eyes. Father God, please forgive me, my brothers and my sisters, for every anything God we done wrong that was not set right in your heart today. Father God, please forgive me, my brothers and my sisters, for every anything God that we participated in our mind, God, that was not part of your will today. Please forgive us. Wash us clean today, God. Purify us through your blood right now today, God. Cover us right now, Father God. Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiving us for our sins. I want to say thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. I want to say thank you, Father God, for the second chance. I want to say thank you for the opportunity. I want to say thank you for the chance of a lifetime. I want to say thank you, Father God, for understanding. Thank you, Jesus. You didn't have to do it, but you did anyway. And I want to say thank you on our behalf. Amen. And before I get started, I always like to take the time out. To give by him the Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, this came thank you enough for this awesome and beautiful blessed day today. I came thank you enough for this word right now. I came thank you for this anointing message right now. I just came thank you, Father God, for the air that we're able to breathe right now. I just came thank you, Father God, for your words and your promises right now. I just came thank you, Father God, for the food that you have blessed and prepared and put on that table right now. The clothes and shoes that you have put on that back. Father God, I just came thank you, Father God, for the angels that is doing us in praise and worship right now. I just came thank, thank you, Father God, for the Holy Spirit that is moving through us right now today. I just came thank you, Father God, because we serve an awesome God, amazing. God, a faithful God, a on time God, a deliverer God, a big God, a keep it real God, a God that keep it 100 all the time God. I just can't think of Father God that we can always call, count, and depend and rely on your holy name. I just can't think of Father God because you never leave us or forsake us. I just can't think of Father God because you never tell us a lie. I just can't think of Father God because you stand on your words and you stand on your promises. I just can't think of Father God how you moving mountains right now on our behalf and we don't even 
see or even realize it right now. I just can't think of for our blessing right now. I can't think of for our breakthrough right now. I can't think of for our nothing right now. I can't think of for our miracle right now. I can't think of for our deliverance right now. I can't think of for our double portion right now. I can't think of for our more than enough right now. I just can't think of for the God for our abundance right now. I just can't think of for the open doors. I can't think of for the door that you have closed. I can't think of for the connection. I can't think of for the resources. I can't think of for the rain. I can't think of for the help. I just can't think of Father God because you about to put us at the right place at the right time. I just can't think of Father God because you have heard our prayers and you have asked our prayers. Our prayers is a phone call away. Our prayers is a knock away. Our prayers is an email away. A text message away. And I just can't thank you enough. I just can't think of Father God for our harvest that we're going to reap this year in the year 2020. I just can't thank you Father God because you about to open up the floodgates of heaven and you about to pour out a blessing on my brothers. You about to pour out a blessing on my sisters that we're going to be able to receive it all. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I worship you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify, I glorify, and I shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. But I can't thank you enough, Jesus. I can't thank you enough. I'm so excited for this word today. And I know that this word is for somebody today. I don't know who. I know that this message is for somebody today. I just don't know who. And I just want y'all to hold on tight because God is about to speak. We all have people or have someone to do us wrong, to do us dirty, to do us shady, to backstab us, to deceive us. And we wonder why we get out of it. We didn't do anything to him. We didn't do anything to her. We didn't deserve this. And, I, and it's in our human nature to try to go after that man or try to go after that woman or try to go after that so-called friend or to go after that relative or that in-law or whoever it was that done us wrong. It's in our nature to try to pay back. It is in our, it's in our nature to go look for him. It's in our nature to go look for her. It is in our nature to say, I can't wait till I see him. Or I can't wait till I see that helper. I'm going to do this to him. Or I'm going to do that to her. Or I can't wait till I get my hands on them. It is in our nature to go try to, to attack the same person who done us wrong. Then God spoke to me. And he spoke to me so clear. To tell, to tell his children right now today. He said, you wasting your time going after him. You wasting your time going after her. And I said, why, God? God said, son, they already suffer. He said, they already suffering already. You might can't see it right now. You might not understand it right now. Because our eyes, we can't see it. Because we're looking through the physical. But God looked through the spiritual. It is like going to the grocery store, my brothers my sisters. And when you go to the grocery store, you see that nice little orange looking like right there. You see that apple right there. See, the outside of the orange look good. The outside of the apple, it look delicious. But the moment that you bite into that apple, the moment that you bite into that orange, it's suffering. It's no good. And God said, that's what's going on with that brother right now. That's what's going on with that sister right now. They suffering already. God said, you don't have to go after him. You don't got to go after her. They're already suffering right now. See, it's the inside that's suffering, my brothers, that we don't see. It's the inside that's suffering, my sisters, that we don't see. See, it's like it's like acid. When you pour acid on something, it always eat from the inside. See, when the inside is ate up and ate out, then the outside starts to show. Right now, you don't even realize they're only this close for hitting rock bottom. They already this close for hitting the concrete. They already there, but we can't see it because we still looking at the physical. 
We're still looking at the outside. But God said they're already suffering already. We want revenge. We want to pay back. We want to go handle our business right then and now. God said, you ain't got to do all that. God said, leave some of that room for me. I just want a little bit of room. I don't need a lot. All thing I need y'all to do is continue to pray for him. That's the only thing that God wants to do is pray. And as long as we do our part by praying, God going to handle the other part on his end. But see, we don't see the suffering part because they got this, they got this, um, this capability about themselves thinking that they're doing good, thinking that they're winning. God said they fronting. God said they lying. Anytime you see them on Facebook, they, they lying on the Facebook. They lying on Instagram. They lying on Snapchat. They lying on YouTube. They lying on Periscope. Ain't nothing going good in their life. They ain't grinding. They ain't going. They ain't they, they ain't at their business. They ain't hustling. And they ain't about they ain't doing they ain't about no business neither. Everything they say they doing on social media, everything they say they doing out there in the world, they are putting on the show, they putting on the front. We just can't see it because the inside, their conscience is tearing them up because they know exactly what they done to you, my brothers. They know exactly what they done to you, my sisters. And the more they continue to live with that lie, the more they continue not to repent, is the more that that acid and that guilt and that nasty infection that's inside their spirit, it is eating them up, my brothers, my sisters. So that's why God said, you ain't got a pan back for, you ain't got a pan back for, for vengeance. You ain't got to go bust their head open to the white meat. He said they already hurting. They already suffering enough right now today. Eventually, they got to come back and see you. Now, I want somebody to keep it real right now. Come on, my YouTube brothers. Come on, my YouTube sisters. I just want y'all to keep it real. How many of you right now today want to go back and bust their brother head open or bust their, or bust their sister head open or bust their in-law head open or their family member, their co-worker because they did something wrong to you? I'm going to be honest. I wanted, I wanted to so bad. God said, you ain't got to do that. He said, they already hurting. They already suffering. They think they cause you pain. They're going through greater pain than what you are going through. See, right now, you are doing better than they are. See, they putting on the show. They fronting and they lying when everybody think and seem that they doing good. But one thing I know about life, my brothers and my sisters, you know somebody doing good or not because you hear people talk about them. And if you hear people talk about it, they out of sight and out of mind, but they want to sit there and front. Like they're doing better than you. They want to put on a show like they got this going on. They want to sit there and parade the whole world talking about they're growing. they grinding and they're going. You're lying, brothers. You're lying, sisters. The only thing that you're doing is lying, lying, lying. How many times and how much are you going to continue to keep up that lie when you know that you're already suffering? Until you repent and confess of what you did, you're going to continue to suffer. Right now, the inside is eating you alive right now today. You better go and hold up what you got right now today and say, hold up, wait a minute. I know I done this brother wrong. I know I done this sister wrong. They were the best thing that ever happened to me. So I must go ahead and confess. So no, you want to sit there and act like you tough and bad. See, one thing I know about the word, my brothers and my sisters, pride comes for a man fall. See, when they pride, that's Lucifer inside of them right now. But when they fall, that means Satan is going to fall. And when Satan falls, Satan going to hit the crown. Just like Lucifer, he was in heaven until God keep them out. And when God keep them out and he fell, he turned into Satan. Right now, they're on the verge to turn to Satan right now because their pride always comes for a man fall. I see them brothers falling right now. I see them sisters falling right now because it's, it's too much that Lucifer is going to continue to hold up in their life. It ain't too much that Lucifer is going to continue to hold up with the lies and the shenanigans that's going on in their life. Eventually, Satan got to come out of them and Satan got to fall. Come on, somebody ain't telling me nothing. God said, you ain't got to pay him back. They're already suffering right now. They're already going through a great old deal right now. You might not understand it right now. You might not see it. But God said, eventually, you're going to see it. You're going to have a front row seat. You're going to have a front row seat and you're going to be able to see the whole show. I'm telling you what I know, my brothers. I'm telling you what I know, my sisters. They just lying to you. They want to throw it in your face like they're doing good. Anytime somebody got to put it on Instagram or on social media, talking about they growing, they going, they grinding, they got this, they got that, they lying. 
They don't want you to know the inside eating them up. Look at their face. Look at their body structure. Look at their face. Look how it don't suck in. Look how much weight they don't lost. That right there's a sign to let you know that they eat is eating them up. They let you know they suffer. When the last time you heard from them? When the last time somebody talked about them? That right there let you know that they out of sight, out of mind. That right there let you know that it's eating them up. Amen? Amen. Let's go to Romans 12, verse 19. Let's see what God got to say about this. Romans 12, verse 19. If you have it, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It said, do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord, on the contrary. Good God Almighty. So that's why he said, you ain't got to do nothing to him. He said, they already say, say, leave me the room. He said, vengeance is mine, not yours, my brothers, not yours, my sisters. I know they want to pay back. God said, why you want to pay them back when they already suffering? I'm already laying my hands on them right now. I'm already working on them right now. I ain't even turned up the heat on them yet, but eventually I'm going to turn up the heat. The more they continue to sit there in guilt, the more they can sit there in their filth, the more they continue to sit there in their lies, I'm going to continue to lay my hand on them until I get all that filth out of them, all that grief out of them, all that lying out of them, all that trying to shame you, to destroy you, I'm going to do my part. Our job is to sit still and know that he is God. Sit still and know that he's God. That the word tells us in Psalm 46 verse 10. And the word, the word be still mean always go on the word of God. Not what you go on in the world. Not what you see on TV. Not what you see on social media. You got to go on what the word of God is saying. And the word of God is telling you right here. He said, do not take revenge, my friends. He said, but leave room for who? God's wrath. Not your wrath, not my wrath, but God's wrath. Hallelujah. For it is written. Not because it's said, not because it's on social media, not because you saw it on TV. It is written through the book. This right here has been written over 2,000 years ago, and it still stands right now today, and it's still strong right now today. He said, for it is written. It is mine to what? To avenge. Nobody else's. God said, it is mine. It belongs to me. He belongs to me. She belongs to me. Everybody try to deceive and destroy my son or my daughter. I got you. God said, I got you. He said, believe that to me. I'm going to take care of that. He said, I will repay. He said, I think about it. He said, I maybe. He said, I will. I will. Oh, help me with this, Jesus. He said, I will. So the thing about it, you ain't got to pay them back. They already suffering right now. God is already paying them back for the wrong they did. He already paying them back right now. They already going through it right now. The word of God said, you should reap what you sow in Galatians 6 and 7. The, the moment that you did what you did to that brother and sister, you already cursed yourself. Whatever it was, whatever that you done to him or her, you already done to yourself. It already going to boomerang back to you. Isaiah 54 verse 17 said, no weapon formed against you should ever work and it should ever um, prosper. The same arrow that shot at you going to be the same arrow is going to hit them right back again. God said, don't keep your eye on the arrow. But keep your eye on the word. The grass withers, and so does the flower fades. Isaiah 40, verse 18. You thought that grass was green on the other side, right? You don't even realize the moment that you went over there, it started, it started, it started withering. The moment you went over there, your flower started fading. Eventually, that shade that you thought it was shade right there is going to go. The moment what you done, how you thought you got away with it, it's going to catch up with you. You better believe that. The word of God said, I will shame them who try to shame you. He said, Yo, I will never allow your enemies to shame you. I will shame them. The word of God said that in Psalm 25 verse 3. And also he said in Isaiah 41 verses 9 and 11. So the same way they try to shame you, God said, they're not going to work. He said, I will never allow your enemies to shame you. The word of God said, I will shame them because what? It is written. Reap what you sow. Why? Because it is written. No weapon formed against you should work or ever prosper because why? It is written. That's what it said. That's what it said. The word said, be still and know that I am God. Why is that? Because it is written. 
He said, don't worry about what you see. Don't worry about what you hear. Don't worry about what you're trying to so-called feel. But you got to stand on the word and know that his word is, is, uh, is irrelevant. That it stand. That he's a man that he should not lie. He cannot change what he said he's going to do. Numbers 23 verse 19. He said they're already suffering now. They're already going through it right now. Now this is the key right here. I want y'all to catch this right now. This right here is the home run. For my brothers who are going through it right now. This is the home run. For my sisters that's going through it right now. Every knee, and every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall will confess. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue will confess. Philippians 2, verse 10 and 11. The same ones who done you wrong, the same one who deceived you, the same one who cheated on you, who broke your heart, who manipulated you, who betrayed you, they got to come down and bow down, and they got to confess everything what they done to you. Because why? It is written. And I believe and I declare right now today, they're on their way to confess everything. They're going to tell you the whole script. They're going to tell you the whole show. And the reason why they're going to do it because the inside has already been ate out. They don't suffer enough. See, the inside ate out. Now the outside ate out. Now they don't have nobody to talk to no more. Everybody, everybody who they thought was their friends, everybody who thought they was down with them, that same little guy who they were chasing out of, they said that was their new boo, that same little girl who they were chasing out of, they don't left them now. They never loved them in the first place. It was just a hit and quitter type thing, but they couldn't see. They was blind. They were stupid. They were chasing out the air, but the air didn't chase out the air. They were chasing out the little boys and little girls, but the little boys and girls didn't chase out of them because they were too busy chasing after the next boy and girl. But they were too blind to see that. They didn't realize that you were the best thing that ever happened to their life, but they were too blind to see that. See, they allowed the enemy to, to manipulate them and trick them and deceive them. But they're going to have to come back. They're going to have to bow down to you. And they're going to have to confess everything that they've done to you. Because why? The word of God says so. That's why God said, be still and know that I'm God. He said, they ain't got away with that. It might seem like they got away with it, but God said, they ain't got away with it. He promised you that. He promised you they have not gotten away with it. So he's telling me to tell somebody right now today, you ain't got to pay them back. They already suffering right now today. I don't know who this word for right now today. I don't know who God is talking to right now today. But he told me to tell you, leave it alone. I got this. Vengeance is mine. I will repay. You ain't got to do nothing but sit still and just wait on me. Don't worry about it. Get it out of your mind. I know it got you upset. I know that you want to go bust somebody's head open. I know that you want to drag them. I know that you want to do everything and in the, in, in the old you come out. But God said, leave that grave man in the grave. Leave that grave woman in the grave. Don't bring them out. Don't bring her because they gone now. I understand they want to come out of you because they want to come out of me. But he said, nah, he in the grave for a reason. Let him stay there. She in the grave for a reason. Let her stay there. I got this right here. I'm going to fight your battles. You ain't got to do nothing but sit still and know that I'm God. All you got to do is sit still and know that I got your back. He said, don't you know I will destroy them? I will shame them. I know they lying on Facebook. I know they putting on the show on Instagram. I know they putting on the show on Snapchat and Periscope. But God said, don't believe the hype. Don't believe what you see. Don't believe what you hear. Because they was doing good, you wouldn't have to put that on social media. You will know they're doing good because people will talk about it. Anytime you got to put something out there telling they doing this, they doing that, they lying, they front, they putting on the show. They ain't doing nothing but lying. They hurting. They suffering right now. The insides is deteriorating right now. It's eating them up right now alive. God said that you are doing way better before than they are. God said, if I have to show you a picture right now of how they look like, God said, you might even feel sorry for them right now. But eventually you'll see them, what they look like. Because their stress is going to eat them out. Their acid is going to eat them out. The lying and the deceit is eating them out. 
like I said before, it's like an apple and an orange. The outside always look good. It's the inside that is rotten. It's like a pack of crackers. And the first couple, the first couple um, crackers in the pack, it look good. Till you get to the bottom, what the bottom look like? It's crumbled. Right now, God said they're crumbling right now. They are fading right now. They are withering right now because what they did. Eventually, the outside is going to crumble. The outside is going to wither. The outside is going to fade. When all that happens, that's how you know you're going to hit rock bottom. Then every knee got to bow and every tongue. Well, they got to confess. Get ready. They about to come to you right now, my brothers. They about to confess to you right now today, my sisters. Get ready to receive that phone call. Get ready, get ready to receive that email. Get ready to receive that text message. Get ready for them to pop up your house and say, I'm sorry. Can you please give me a second chance? I didn't mean to do this. I don't know what I was going through. I must have been smoking on something. I must have been drinking on something. Satan made me do it. We already forgave my brothers my sisters. We already forgave God, you do your thing right now. We stepping out of the way, God. We letting go, and we're going to let you do your thing, God. Because you gave us your word, God. God, I came here today to tell your sons and your daughters what you want me to tell them. That they ain't got to touch it no more. They ain't got to worry about it no more. Because they already suffering. God, you told me to tell your sons right now and your daughters right now today. Don't worry about anything. But be still. Know that I'm God. Don't worry about what's going on in the world. Don't worry about what we see here, but know and stand on the word of God, what it stands for, what it says, that it's always real, that you cannot change this. It is written that you will repay. It is written that every knee shall bow and every tongue is confessed. It is written that no weapon formed against us shall never work or prosper. It is written that the grass withers and the flower fades. It is written that you will never allow your enemies to shame us, God, that you will shame and destroy them, God, and all who rages against us, God, that you're going to take care of them too as well. It is written in the word right here. Let God stand on his word. And God is a man. He should not lie. He stand on his words, my brothers and sisters. He stand on his promises. They are already suffering right now. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today, if I was praying a simple little prayer, that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is witness.alt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always glorify him. Always put your faith and your trust and hope in God no matter what. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer help. Prayer change them because prayer is a powerful medication. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. I just ask y'all guys to continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. This servant minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. Amen.